welcome back to channel friends so today we'll be seeing how covid becomes a pro thrombotic state and what are all the medications available blood thinners then once a patient get discharged from covid what is the protocol you should follow to give blood thinners to him okay let's see it in a animation fashion so first according to virtue spread first is endothelial injury so there are evidences that corona virus directly affects the endothelium causing endothelitis and thus favoring thrombosis next is our immune cells neutrophils the neutrophils secretes lots of cytokines interleukin 6 and those condensed chromatin of the neutrophils dead and dying neutrophils which also irritate the endothelium causing endothelial injury as well as they are responsible for hypercoagulable state in covid so this is the neutrophil extracellular traps nets okay next is hypercoagulability one is nets next is increased acute phase reactants like fibrinogen factor 8 all are coagulation factors which if increased contribute into hypercoagulability and thrombosis next is stasis when the stasis happens either severe inflammation is there the blood flow is become uh, slow or when the patient is immobile like severe moderate covid patients where they are bedridden immobilization stasis thrombosis so all these factors contribute to thrombosis in covid-19 now let's see some basic as well as advanced concepts in coagulation system that will help us understand about anticoagulants better first is whenever any endothelial injury happens in a blood vessel first our platelets will come to the rescue and forms the first plug and also tissues are damaged so tissue factor will be released which is the factor 3 this factor 3 will activate the sleeping factor 7 into active 7a which is the extrinsic pathway this 7a will in turn activate the sleeping 10 to 10a and factor 10 will in turn activate factor 5 into 5a and this 5 10 and calcium as well as phospholipids combined they activate the most important player in the coagulation system which is the factor 2 the thrombin this thrombin will in turn convert fibrinogen to fibrin thus forming the clot fibrin threads and clot is sealed so why why is i saying thrombin to be the most important player because it has multitude of functions first if you see as we know it converts fibrinogen to fibrin next is it activates factor 13 which is fibrin stabilizing factor after bricks are laid in the clot cementing meaning cross linking is done by factor 13 this is activated by thrombin and this thrombin also activates factor 12 nothing but the intrinsic pathway 12a will thus convert 11 into 11a 11a will convert 9 into 9a and along with factor 8 9 as well as calcium all three together combine and then convert factor 10 into 10a same common pathway will follow okay next thrombin it also activates platelets to aggregate as well as secrete granules so thus it helps in first primary platelet plug formation and by forming fibrin it forms secondary platelet plug formation by activating factor 12 as well as factor 8 it stimulates the intrinsic pathway by activating factor 5 common pathway and activating factor 13 stabilizing the fibrin threads all are done by thrombin so now think if you just inhibit thrombin either directly or indirectly the entire coagulation cascade can be aborted so only the drugs if you see the factor 10a inhibitors like rivaroxaban apixaban 
they will have XA, 10A band, meaning inhibitors. They will inhibit factor 10, thus indirectly inhibiting thrombin formation. Next is direct thrombin inhibitors, like Dabica, Tran, if you see, T-R-A-N, T-R for thrombin, A-N for antagonist. Next is these heparins, low molecular weight heparins, all these. We will be seeing detail one by one. First, let's see about unfractionated heparins. This heparin will activate a lazy cutter which is anti-thrombin 3. It will cut 10, 11, 12 factors easily. But for cutting factor 2, this unfractionated heparin which has a long polysaccharide arm will push this factor 2 into its mouth and get it cut. This is what happens with respect to unfractured heparin. Then its metabolism, it is cleared by the liver. Then T half is just one hour. That means we can just give by IV infusions or subcutaneous injections. And in COVID, moderate and severe COVID, only in patients of CKD where the EGFR, creatinine clearance, if less than 30, we prefer unfractioned heparin always as it is cleared by liver. Next is monitoring. Since its values, since it has a very short half-life, it should be continuously monitored by APTT, PTINR values, also anti-10A activity if possible. Next is the low molecular weight heparins. Low molecular weight, meaning its weight is reduced. How? The unfractured heparin was having a powerful arm which pumps factor 2 into its cutter. But here, this weight is reduced by cutting the arm of the heparin. It is enoxaparin. So, it can easily cut factor 10, 11, 12, but for cutting factor 2, its efficacy is very less. So, it inhibits factor 10, 11, 12 more than Next, it is cleared by kidney. Half-life is 6 to 12 hours, meaning we have a longer broad range of activity. Next, it can be given during, uh, it can be given by subcutaneous dosings. Dosing, if you see, 0.5 mg per kg. Subcute OD for moderate COVID and subcute BD for severe COVID. And this dosings might be changed in case of obese patients, elderly patients. Obese patients might require more than this dosing and elderly patients might require less than these dosings. And in case of any kidney disease patient, calculate the EGFR. If it is less than 30 ml, it's always better to go to unfractionated heparin. Although you can give clexane 0.4 ml subcute OD, still it's preferred to go to unfractionated heparin. Next, monitoring. Not much of monitoring activity required. Only if you give in patient of CKD, then you can monitor by doing anti-factor 10A activity. By how much it is inhibiting factor 10A. Yes. Next is the novel oral anticoagulants. First, factor 10A inhibitor, rivaroxaban. The mechanism, as we explained earlier, it is also cleared by the liver, mainly cytochrome P3A4 enzyme. So, be with caution before giving it with other PGP and Cyte3A4 inducers or inhibitors. Strong inducers and inhibitors are there. See those uh, interactions and then give this drug. Next, Next, half-life is 6 to 12 hours. It can be given by oral dosings, tablet, rivaroxaban, 10 mg OD is being given for moderate COVID as well as in mild COVID with high risk factors or comorbidities or with D-dimer more than two times the upper limit of normal. Next, monitoring not much of monitoring required. That's the best part of this rivaroxaban. Next is apixaban. 
apix7 also a factor in inhibitor it is also cleared by the liver same cytochrome p3 uh, 3a4 enzymes same drug interaction should be considered before giving this next half life it's for this also 6 to 12 hours it is given by tablet apix7 2.5 mg bd dosing and this dosing will be changed according to renal parameters like whenever patient develops ak after giving this stop the drug or dosing is reduced in case of ckd patients without dialysis and in ckd patients with dialysis dosing is increased as this drug is a partially dialysable uh, drug so dose will be increased in case of ckd with hemodialysis so yes this is the consolidated list of whatever we have seen now we will see in case of pregnancy in pregnancy there is always a risk of bleeding during labor so these anticoagulants are given based upon benefits versus risks in case of lactation there is no known risks with respect to unfractionated heparin but the data is unknown with respect to clixane and with respect to 10 inhibitors benefits versus risk calculation must be there next is monitoring heparin needs intense monitoring every 4 hour APT, TPT and our monitoring will be there but remaining others doesn't need that intense monitoring antidotes protamine sulfate chemical antagonism protamine sulfate is a positive charged ion and heparin will be negative they will bind together and antagonize not much of effect will be seen with respect to clixane and antidote to factor 10a inhibitor is and exanet alpha remember like and for antidote xa factor 10a n inhibitors antidote to factor 10a inhibitor and exanet alpha this is the most important question what blood thinner should be given post discharge of covid patient first is you should calculate a score which is the modified venous thromboembolism risk score according to it if a patient has previous history of venous thromboembolism then it carries the maximum score 3 next if the patient has lower limb hemiparesis or paralysis that is stasis 2 points next history of cancer hypercoagulable state 2 points next known thrombophiliacs 2 points next history of hospitalization for severe covid like icu stays 1 point and immobilization patient himself is immobile for more than one day 1 point very elderly patients who, who are usually immobile patients so they also carry 1 points and in this score if it is more than or equal to 4 in a moderate or severe covid patient who has recovered for this patients if the score is more than or equal to 4 then you can consider anticoagulants next for the same moderate severe covid patients if their score is more than or equal to 2 plus the d dimer at discharge is more than two times the upper limit of normal then we can consider anticoagulants and in patients of uh, moderate severe covid age if it is more than or equal to 75 years itself you can give anticoagulants or if the age is 60 to 75 look for the d dimer alone if it is more than two times the upper limit of normal you can give anticoagulants if the age is 40 to 60 then you should calculate the same thing score calculation d dimer if it is more than or equal to two and two times upper limit normal d dimer then you can consider anticoagulants like rivaroxaban 10 mg od or apixaban 2.5 mg bd for 45 days so mild covid patients if the patient has comorbidities or if the patient is morbidly obese then we consider giving only ecosperin aspirin 70 mg od other than that we won't go for anticoagulants for mild covid patients so this will be given 45 days and follow up will be done with D-dimer values as well as the patient's clinical status. That's it for the day. So the notes for the same video will be provided in our WhatsApp and Telegram groups.
that's it thanks for watching